Hey guys, today's topic is going to be random variables, and um, a random variable is just kind of a fancy word with a fancy definition for just a quantitative variable that stands for whatever it is you're measuring in your experiment or your study. Um, the, you can see the official book definition here, uh, a variable whose value is a numerical outcome of a random phenomenon. Uh, you don't really need to worry about that specific book definition. Um, it's just whatever we're measuring, whatever we're looking at in our statistical tests. So the two main groups, we have continuous and discrete random variables. And those are two words that hopefully you know. Um, an example of a continuous would be the mile times for all high school track runners in the USA. And I just, I don't know exactly what that would look like. I don't really know what the fastest milers in high school can do, but this is a density curve. Okay, so this is something that looks, I don't know if they can do it in four and a half, five minutes, maybe. I would expect that this is a left skewed type of thing. And then maybe that, you know, if you're on the track team, you can probably run a 10 minute mile. I'm not sure if I can, but I'm pretty sure a high school track runner could. So these are density curves, right? This is um, like the normal curve. We aren't gonna do many calculations with these because the only ones you can really work with um, are normal curves, and we've talked a whole lot about normal curves. We're going to be worrying about discrete random variables. These are going to be histograms as far as graphing it. This is the number of cats owned by all families, PLD students. So whereas how long it takes you to run a mile could be any value. You know, we probably round that to the nearest second or tenth of a second, depending on how accurate our stopwatch is. But Cats come in whole numbers, all right? You could have any time, but you can only have a certain number of cats, all right? Cats don't come in whole numbers. Even if you have a thousand cats, it's still, you know, the possibilities could be one through a thousand. If the person in the world with the most cats has a thousand, you can't have 1.4 cats. So I'm gonna just make these up. I'm gonna say that half of us here at PLD have no cats. And I'm going to say that 30% of us have one, and 10% of us have two, 5% of us have three, and then I'm going to give another 5% people who have eight. All right, maybe they live on a farm and they've got lots of cats out in the barn, or maybe they're cat breeders, or maybe they just love cats. Um, those are the last 5% of people who have eight cats way out there. So we've got a definite skew to our histogram. So these are just two examples. What we're going to be working with in this section, and this is actually one and a little bit of two, I want to know the mean and the standard deviation of the number of cats of everybody in the school. All right, there's an average number. If I were able to sit down with every person and, and um, write down how many cats you own and then average all those numbers, which I could do, it'd be a lot of numbers to average, I could do that and I'd get that value but I can get that average without having to go through all that I can use my what's called a probability distribution to figure this out okay so let's work on the mean all this is is an expected value or a weighted average okay what we're finding out is the average number of cats that everyone has okay well if 50 percent of us have zero and 30% of us have one, and 10% of us one have two, and 5% of us have three, and 5% of us have eight, then I add these values together and I'm gonna get my weighted average. And that average is 1.05 cats. Okay, so you can tell if you go back to your picture, 1.05 cats is you know, right here, about the center of the second bar. So I've got more people, um, more people to the left of that, but that one that one bar out at eight really pulls the mean to the um, right. It doesn't do it extreme, extremely um, hard, but it pulls it some so there are more people to the left than there are to the right. Um, 
so anyway, the, the mean of a random variable of a discrete random variable, no problem. All right, it just takes a few minutes. Take each value and multiply it by the probability that it happens or the proportion of people who fall in that category. Obviously, the 0.5 times 0 didn't, uh, didn't count for anything in the mean. If you left that off, that's okay, but I wanted to put it in just for effect and to show you what we're working on next, how it does matter. Um, on this standard deviation or variance. Okay, so if I, again, if I had a list of everyone in the school and wrote down how many cats they had, they're 0, 1, 2, 3, or 8, added them all together and divided by, let's say there are 2,200 people, uh, my result would have been 1.05. All right, variance slash standard deviation. The formula you can see at the top. It's the sum of x sub i minus mu sub x squared times P sub i. Now that means quite a bit wrapped up in there. In this chart, when we found standard deviations the old way with just a set of numbers, we did a chart similar to this. So let's start with my x values. The x values are just the values of the variable. Okay, I had everybody in the school with either 0, 1, 2, 3, or 8 cats. Probabilities were 50%, 30%, 10%, 5, and 5. So this is the probability distribution. That's the same thing that would have been um, given by the question. X sub i, P sub i. That's just saying multiply each value by its probability. And these values we've already kind of worked with, those are here. Here's my first X sub i, P sub i. And there they are. So this third column of this chart is the one that we're going to add together to get the mean. The mean, you have to use the mean to go on. So I'll show you that in just a minute. My first one, when I multiply them, I get 0. I get 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 1.5. And 8 times 0 0.05 should be 0 0.4. Now I add these numbers together. Every time you do this process to find the variance or the standard deviation, which will get both, you add up your third column. You have to find the mean. If you knew the mean already from a previous question, you don't need to really worry about this. You will already have it. But I'm going to add those together. Now, this should match what I just got, 0.3. Just a second. Let me check that out. Okay, I see what I did. If you look here, I, I did 1.5 instead of 0.15. So I add this column up, I get 1.05 as my mean. That's nothing I haven't done. Now, what's going to happen in these next three columns? I'm going to take each x value, the 0, 1, 2, 3, and 8, and I'm going to subtract the mean from it. That's what this means. The little i just means do it for each different x. The little mu sub x means average of all my x's. So I'm going to take each one individually and subtract the mean. So my first value is going to be 0 minus 1.05, negative 1.05. My second value is 1 minus 1.05, or negative 0 0.05. 2 minus 1.05 is 0 0.95. 3 minus 1.05 is 1.95. And 8 minus 1.05 is 6.95. Next thing I'm going to do is square these numbers. And then after I square them, I'm going to take them each and multiply them by the probability, the P sub I column. Now, we did this in our calculators probably for regular standard deviation. I'm going to show you this now because this is where it starts to get a little, um, a little tedious if you're not using the lists in your calculator. Go to your list, to stat edit, where we always spend all of our time. And we're just going to make this chart out of our columns. My first one is list one is the x's. List two is their probabilities. List three, remember if you want to program something, you go up and highlight list three and tell it what you want it to be. I want it to be list one times list two. Okay? There are those values that we already had. Now, list four, I need it to be list one minus the sum of list three. You can stop here and on paper add it up, or you can program it. I've got old list four stuff in there. I can go up and highlight list four and say, I need this to be all my L1s minus, if you didn't add them up yet, I can just I can type 1.05 right here, or I can go to my list menu and go over to math and choose option five, sum, 
and I want to do the sum of list three. So what will happen here is it will add it up and get the 1.05, and then we'll take each L1 and subtract those values, and there's the values that I just wrote down in the chart. Okay, list five is list four squared, which the top of the chart tells us to do. And there are those. And then list six is going to be list five times list two. I'm taking those squared values and multiplying it by the particular probability, L5 times L2. All right. So in my calculator, I've got my lists finished. So if I'm writing this on paper, I'm just going to copy down what I see in my calculator into these lists. Now let's go back to the formula for a minute. What does this thing say I need to do? The variance, which is just the standard deviation squared, is the sigma or the sum of those numbers that I just found out in my calculator. So I'm going to add up the final list to get my variance. the sum of the six column. Now, in my calculator, again, I like to do this in the calculator because it takes off all the rounding error and it keeps my numbers fairly exact until I'm done. What I need to do, and I'll just quit and get out of here to my main screen, I need to go back to list over to math and find the sum of list six, sum of all the values in list six, and they add up to 3.2475. So the variance of my variable x is 3.2475. Now, expected value and mean, they have a, a nice real-world application. You know, I expect the average person or typical person to have about 1.05 cats. Now, that doesn't mean that anybody actually has 1.05, but it just kind of makes sense. You know, it gives us an idea of a typical person, what they might have. It does. It's not... Um, doesn't describe everything, but anyway, mean has a better real-world interpretation than standard deviation and variance. Variance really doesn't have one at all. Standard deviation is the square root of variance. Standard deviation has kind of a real-world application. It's on average how many cats away from the mean you would expect a typical person to be. It's not great as far as, you know, making a lot of sense real world, but it's something. So our standard deviation is one point, we'll just call it 1.8. Okay, so um, by the way, standard deviation, is lowercase sigma, mean, lowercase mu, and there we go. All right, so that's it. That's our goal of the day, to be able to find the mean and the standard deviation of a discrete random variable. All right, so that is it. I'm going to go home and feed my cat and go for a run. I'm out.